That's not dirt, people, that's mold. Okay, here we go. So I don't know if you can see, you probably can't, but the reason I haven't been very motivated to work so far is because it's just wet. Everything's wet, everything's dirty, there's a bunch of, you know, soggy leaves all over the, the, the pavement, and like in here especially, it's just a muddy mess. It's just, like, I can't think of anybody who'd want to work in that. Of course, we got the rats. See all the rat poops and pee right there? That's always fun. And there are acorns in there. I got Irish spring soap, hopefully keeping them from going inside the um, cabin. But I don't know if that's going to work. And then when I come inside here, that's not dirt, people. That's mold. This is what happened last year when I had the car cover on. It's just horrible and just keeps getting worse and worse. Even when I leave the doors open all day, when it, on a day when it's not raining. It's early February right now, but I mean, look at that. That means a rat's been in here. That's just gross. So, you know, I gotta look for a nest now. I don't see any. Ugh, it's just disgusting. I'll look in the trunk. Oh. Looks like this is like the only place that's relatively clean. I'm surprised there's no rat's nest in here. This would be a great place for them to make a nest, but they're too stupid. So much for this garage, quote unquote. It's not really helped at all, keeping this car from being dirty. So like if I'm gonna do any work on the car, it's gonna be moved out to where the pilot is because um, I want pavement. I know it's not perfectly even, you can tell, but it's way better than that. Now this right here, this was the worst part, so of course the battery tray upside down. This was in the car, I stupidly left it in the car with a couple bolts in it for the battery tray and the um, washers and things for the transmission linkage. And the entire thing, the entire thing was covered in a rat's nest. So like the rat's nest was here and it was all poo. Just mounds and mounds of poo and my bolts were under there and I had to dump it out and then sift through the poo to find my bolts. So yeah, quite a winter this year but it seems like it's on its way out and so we're gonna get back to work now. I've also been thinking about just how badly I wanna get back out on the track and how quickly, um, like really bad. So. Um, I need to kind of update my plans a little bit so I can be more realistic. I'm going to make you guys a short little uh, build plan um, on my whiteboard right here and so you can see what I'm talking about. Alright guys, so here's those plans. Um, before I show you the plans, I just want to let you know about a great book out there. This is SA Designs. Um, Joe Pettit's the author. Uh, down there you can see High Performance Honda Builder's Handbook. Definitely couldn't recommend it more. Great uh, builds. This is a, you know, quite outdated, but um, from the previous decade to mid-2000s. And uh, it's a great book though, just H and B series builds in here, just really awesome, I couldn't recommend it more. So, to the plans. So, hey, I got a haircut. Um, these are called the back on the road plans for a reason. The reason being that I really wanna get driving. I wanna get driving quickly. I don't have a lot of time to build and uh, a ton of money. Um, so I need to uh, think more practically and so that's what's going on here. Um, let me move this over a little bit. So uh, I'm still going to focus on oil starvation and prevention. I definitely don't want that. I'm still going to do uh, the baffled oil plant for sure and the ported oil pump. Bad Guys Worldwide makes, uh, makes those for F23 pumps which I assume and still believe are uh, identical to the F22 pumps. And um, I have things in parentheses that I'm not sure about yet. I'm not sure if I need a windage tray if I get the baffled oil pan from Moroso. Uh, but I can get one from an F22A6 motor and there's some in my local junkyard. We got the oil accumulator also in parentheses. I'm not sure I need that. I'm not sure I need to increase the oil capacity just to fill that thing. But uh, I'll do some more research on that just to double check. So 
once I have those bases covered, what most likely caused the motor to fail in the first place, I'm thinking about um, the, the three ways to make a four-stroke control combustion engine increase power. Number one is to increase the power of the, the force of the power stroke. Number two is to reduce any internal engine friction, that'd be fluid friction, flu uh, friction against the fluids coming in and out. And then uh, to reduce internal rotation losses or parasitic losses from outside spinning components and things like that. So let me first go over reducing internal engine friction. Um, I'm going to work on the bolt-ons specifically. So um, bad guys worldwide, again, they have a CNC porting machine. They've got a map for the H23 intake manifold. I think they do just the runners. But uh, to port the runners and then uh, to... Uh, Combine that with a black track plenum spacer instead of the uh, stock spacer, which has um, the secondary uh, runners in it. Um, I wouldn't need those. So this is going to, of course, all these changes right here would uh, affect low-end torque, but that's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about high-end power. I want to flow that, the uh, air at the higher RPMs. Um, and I'll pair that with uh, Skunk 2 Alpha Series throttle body. They have 66 or 70 millimeter throttle bodies, and everything, all the stock hookups are... It, there for the Alpha series, not the Pro series. So this is Alpha, and I'm not sure if I need to go 70 millimeters. I might want 66, uh, depending on my power needs. Again, if you go really big, you're gonna um, sacrifice some of that lower end torque. And then um, if I could still find these, I know Busy Moto has completely fallen away from the Honda world, but I'm gonna see if I can still find one of his intake manifold uh, heat shielding gaskets. They're blue. They're they're kind of thick. And I'd like to see if I can still find one of those. Um, uh, PLM ha has many headers that are really well designed. And um, I want to get the tri-wire header. Now, it's designed for an H22 motor. But um, you can, if you get an F22 exhaust manifold flange, you can weld it to that, cut the edge off. I know that would suck, but um, people have done that. I've heard it done. And uh, I'll just uh, make that to that flange so I can hook up to my F22 head. Then uh, K-Teller, the exhaust side, uh, we're going to go 3 inch, we're not going to have a restriction, I'm pretty sure at the top end I have a restriction with my 2 and a quarter inch piping, so we'll go to 3 inch exhaust, they've got a kit for this car, um, I'll have to have a welder put it on because it's probably going to hit the progress rear sway bar, it's going to have issues with clearance back there being 3 inches. Uh, I'm going to have an ultra quiet resonator, so the Vibrant company is an amazing company, they've got a uh, 3 inch resonators and mufflers um, so I'll make sure to make those ultra quiet and um, they also if I can find it for crankcase ventilation not the PCV line but the breather I'm looking to see if I can um, now I've seen another person do this on the CB7 tuner forum you know who you are DJ Kaz AOM he has uh, found a long time ago and used their breather to exhaust piping and it has a it has a filter in it, but it it vents it to the exhaust um, to a, after the collector. So I'm looking for that. That would be great. I, it's very hard to find. I haven't found one yet, but I know they existed. So uh, there's probably some for sale somewhere. Just got to do some looking. Okay, now let's talk about me reducing some internal and rotational parasitic losses. So I'm going to eliminate the balance shafts. I've already told you that I'm going to still do that. They're already out. But um, I'm going to look at Kaizen Speed. So Kaizen Speed makes the balance shaft elite kits, and you can press them in yourselves. But uh, I've heard from someone who made a great comment on the channel uh, about how the, his motor almost failed because they almost pushed themselves out, and he caught it just in time. So Kaizen Speed does make uh, does sell oil pumps with these kits installed, but I want to make sure. Um, that they're not stock. If they are, I'm going to have uh, bad guys worldwide port an oil pump for me and then send it over to them to have the balance shaft delete kit installed because I do want the porting done as well. Then I'm going to, of course, uh, convert the power steering to manual rack. That'll clean up the engine bay, make things easy, a little easier to get to, and reduce that parasitic loss. That's a huge one. And with that, I don't need the stock harmonic balance. So I'm going to get a damper. The ATI Super Damper, uh, dampener, I spelled it wrong. It's a damper, and uh, it's so it has damping. It's not like um, some of those just uh, pulleys that don't have any damping. Those are very dangerous. Don't use those. Use a damper like ATIs. Um, so it doesn't have a, a, 
a rack for the power steering belt because I won't have a power steering belt because I won't have a power steering pump. Okay, so when I reassemble the engine, I need to be careful. Again, it's about doing this so that it's reliable so I can drive to and from the track. That's kind of what this back on the road means. I can still smog the car. I still have the uh, stock air box, so I'll put that back on when it's smog time. This year will be smog time for this car. And so I definitely want to, uh, uh, this, this build will allow me to do that and allow me to smog the car. Um, I'm gonna get some new OEM main bearings and rod bearings, just replace them all. Uh, new piston ring set for all four pistons. And I'm gonna look at the number two piston pin. It's loose. The piston uh, rotates more freely than the other pistons, number one, three, and four. So I'm gonna see if I need to press in a new piston pin. I might, um, it just got knocked around so much with both rod bearings gone. Um, on the bottom end, I'm gonna make sure to uh, use ARP rod bolts or studs. I'm not sure if they're bolts or studs this in this case, but uh, I'm gonna uh, take out the stock, stock bolts and put in ARP bolts or studs down there. Um, I'm going to make sure I get all new engine seals, rear main seal, the crank seal, um, water pump seals, oil pumps, uh, that's uh, Honda Bond, but um, I think there's a certain part of the pump that needs a new rubber seal. All those new rubber seals will be there, um, new seals for the uh, valve cover as well, um, and uh, including oil pan seal, valve cover seal, just need to redo all the seals that I took off, which is almost every one. And then a uh, new timing belt and water pump while I'm there, I might as well do that. So last thing I wanted to show you is something I didn't talk about last time over here, the interior exterior. So I'm going to be doing some modifications in this regard. The most important one I'm excited about is that I'm going to do a rear disc conversion. I've been talking about that in the previous CP7 track day video that you guys love to watch. Thanks for the comments and the likes and the views uh, on that. Um, I needed discs. The front brakes were getting cooked. I need some help from the rear. So I'm going to do a full rear disc conversion, which means you include the booster, uh, the brake booster, and the master cylinder from the CB7 that had rear discs, which was the 10th anniversary special edition or the uh, SE uh, trim. And that also includes their proportioning valve, which is a little different than, of course, the rear drum's proportioning valve. Uh, Certain Integra, Integras that I know of, I believe, or the RSXs, have the 40-40 proportioning valve, and people talk about that being a well worth it mod. It just really uh, increases brake balance. <clears throat> I will not, uh, I will be getting the trailing arms and the rear knuckles and all this assembly, including the brake lines and the emergency brake cables from a CB7 that has rear discs. I've confirmed that there are one in my local junkyard, but um, I'm gonna take the booster and the master cylinder and, uh, as well. So I'm also going to do a little rate reduction. I'm going to remove the dash. I'm going to put a nice little um, aluminum sheet or stainless steel sheet of metal just to create an instrument cluster in the middle um, just to kind of clean up because there's a lot of wire. If you take off the dash, you'll see there's a ton of wires back there and it'll look a little clunky. So I'm going to try and clean that up by covering it up with something just a lot lighter that I'll cut myself. Um, I'm also going to uh, take out my seat, which again is super moldy. I'm going to rip just my seat. Sparco makes a um, racing seat for this car that's five-point harness ready. Uh, it doesn't come with the harness, obviously, but uh, five-point harness ready that um, has a, uh, a rack for the seat that uh, fits into our car's chassis. So that's what I'm really excited about. I might be getting that one. Um, and I'll keep the uh, stock steering wheel, which I love, and the stock uh, restraint system with it. Um, I'm gonna also look at front uh, front spoiler underneath. When I'm getting up to near 90 and 100, I'm gonna, things, it's it's really intense. You do, I, someone crashed last time I went to the track uh, at Laguna Seca. They went in the dirt on the outside of turn one and came in and did a 360 and smashed into the inside concrete, moving it two feet. Uh, I want more stability when I get near 100, 105 miles an hour on the street, which is what I'm hoping for with this build. We'll scoot and look at a rear diffuser as well um, with some ABS plastic, see what I can do. I'll just do some more research on that to stabilize things in the back, airflow underneath in the rear. Also, um, I'm also going to, on track days, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a new set of the wheels I have, which are Maxim 15-inch uh, uh, wheels, 15 by 6.5. 
but I'm also going to uh, wrap them in Brinstone Potenza RE71Rs. I cannot get RE11s or Michelin Pilot Super Sports or the Super Duper ones uh, on those size wheels, but I love the lightness of the wheels. I know my Speedo reads fast, but I don't really care. I just want the good wheels. Um, the light wheels and so these these tires are great people love these tires they get them the Bridgestone Potenza RE71Rs and uh, so I'll wrap those around a new set of wheels and switch those out on track days like most serious track people do okay guys so this is the plan um, it's really gonna cut down on costs I get to check off a ton of the things on these two pieces of paper these are just the things I had to buy um, or the jobs I had to do I'm gonna cut almost like uh, a third uh, or you know close to a half of these off and that's gonna cut costs that's gonna make this go faster which is what I want because I want to get back out on the track for May 21st track day so look forward to some unboxing videos and uh, working on the car videos in the near future I'll be posting more frequently I promise but for now this is Falconator signing out